Okay, we're back. Back again. Welcome back, everyone. Prestige, good night if you're still lurking out there. Dr. Tosh, checking in later in the week. That was very exciting news about the affiliate sub program. It's time. Time to head for the Mew Relay. Nylos. Sitting on a few points. We'll see. We might crack. Um, we are going to crack 45. I won't see 50. Looky, looky. We should probably go down and uh, sell off some junk as well, just so we don't overload. All right, if we end up turning everything into Omni Gel later because we're full, that's fine. I'm amazed it hasn't even happened during this playthrough, not once. Not to once. What's that? Uh, ready? Love, actually, but it's Mass Effect character. Ready, didn't you ask about the Twitch Prime sub recently? We were just, um, just informed that that's, that's gonna be a thing now. You'll be able to do that. Within the, within the next week, sub buttons for affiliates are gonna show up and you will be able to use Twitch Prime subs and all that stuff. Very cool. Uh, looking for supplies? Let's see what you've got. You bet. Let's do this in reverse. We'll sell first and equip after. Ah, oh, now, now we got nice stuff. Lots of nice stuff showing up here. Now that we don't need it. Have I never seen Love Actually? No, I haven't. I know the name. I've not seen the film. Message coming in. Patching it through. Hey, cool. Got all your characters right. Thank you for the host. Ready? <clears throat> so let's start at the bottom. Let's see what our highest tier stuff is and what we might keep, and then we can sell almost everything else. Guns, guns. We're starting to get some really nice guns, but we've already bought into Spectre weapons. Which, in most or all cases, are still better than even some of the higher tier weapons. Like, look at this assault rifle. Let's see if that's right or wrong. I, I think it's right. Comparison. Why can't I get a comparison for the rest of the crew? Um, well, there it is, anyways. That Spectre weapon still beats the tier 9 tsunami. Damn, Looking no! For supplies? Give me the menu back. Let's see what you've got. You bet, Commander. I can thank Monarch for the J-Oops craze. That craze exists in your mind. Um, but how, how is it? How is, how is Laz responsible for that? I don't understand, sir. We're gonna have to make, um, some decisions about emotes, too. Official emotes. We're gonna have to make some decisions. We won't be able to have them all. Maybe we'll make some new ones. Snow blind rounds. Target loses accuracy. You shoot more slowly, but you get extra damage and your target loses accuracy. Not bad. Sledgehammer rounds. Um, Weapon overheats faster, but these are pretty useful in the end sequence. Sledgehammer rounds, anything with weapon force. We're going to be doing some stuff, not on ILOs, but after ILOs, where just lifting an enemy off the ground or sending them flying with a throw is going to see them blown off into space. So if we can lift them up um, and maybe send them flying a little further, a little force from actual projectiles, better chance of them flying off into space. Could you have the same ones on BTTV and Switch uh, and Twitch? You could, you could. Yeah, I don't think um, BTTV is gonna change anything in response to this. Don't expect so. And also the prefix, we're not gonna get a nice J prefix. Whatever it is, we don't even get to pick it. Sounds like our emote prefix for Twitch is gonna be chosen for us as part of the new affiliate sub program.
Scram Rail's nice. You get a damage boost without as much uh, extra heat. Yeah, see, that is probably going to be it. That, that will probably have to do the cheers. That'll probably be our, our primary emote. Don't you think it should be? But I, I want to get some feedback on that. Sub badge is pretty much decided already. It's the new logo uh, you can see on the other corner there. But then we get extra emotes for the higher tiers. There's going to be a lot to think about. Three, four, nice medical exoskeletons. We can upgrade everyone in the in the squad. We'll be fighting. My explosive rounds are nice. Look at that. Good ammo upgrade, high explosive rounds, heat generation, weapons, force, damage. Everything goes up. Um, okay, part of that's not good. You get a blast radius. Your weapon has an incredible amount of force and extra damage, but you also overheat in just a couple shots. No cool. How much we're getting for these weapons too at tier 8? 35,000, 36,000, 42,000? Nice assault rifle. That actually might be better than the Spectre one. The Breaker. Who am I actually going to equip it on? Hmm. I hardly use my assault rifle, though I did during Bring Down the Sky for some reason. I'm using it a lot because my gun kept overheating. They kept um, sabotaging my weapon. Okay, AC Star, sleep well. Early morning tomorrow, need to head to bed. Get your sleep, get your beauty sleep. We'll see you later. I guess it's no stream tomorrow, so we'll see you on Thursday. But uh, who knows, people want to play some games tomorrow. I've got a computer client in the morning. I may be working on some of the affiliate sub stuff uh, tomorrow, now, as it turns out. But who knows, maybe we'll play some games tomorrow too. Good luck with Lilo's. Thank you. Trying to sell stuff by going up the list is such a pain. Um, but it scrolls down because it feeds in up. No longer need a tier five medical implant. All right, that's pretty good. We have a bunch of ammo and armor upgrades, weapon upgrades. Most of these will not get used. We're not going to swap out everything. We're not going to reconfigure everybody's everything. But I will go ahead and take a better medical interface. Medical exoskeleton, three and a half regen, toxin resist, reduction in power cooldown. These things are awesome. We're going to have Liara and Garrus with us, I think, for most of the rest of the game. So they get the same upgrades. Medical exoskeleton. Got one more really nice one too. Uh, Rex already has a lot of regen. Let's give this to Tali. I don't think we're going to be taking Tali out, but who knows? Rex. Smash damage physics threshold. Blade of coding. Anyways. What am I checking? What am I doing here? For frictionless materials, rail extension, damage and heat absorption. We could swap that out for the scram rail. And we come out with a positive on heat absorption. Another upgrade in there. It's kinetic coil, damage, weapon stability, weapon stability. Another scram rail. I think that's all good enough. The 
never a dull moment with you, Shepard. You ever go on any missions like ours before? Saving the galaxy from certain destruction? No. But I've had my share of adventures. Do you remember any that stick out? A few. I remember one time I was hired by a Volus diplomat. What an ass. I guess even politicians have need of mercs from time to time, huh? Time to time. If it wasn't for politicians, I'd be out of work. They're always looking for ways to get ahead. This one was no different. He wanted me to erase his past. Get rid of an old friend who knew too much. Huh. His old friend turned out to be an Asari commando. I can see why that might give you pause. What? No. Alina and I were old friends. Sort of. We met when we were both contracted to kill the same Turian. Neither of us wanted the other one to get him first. We spent more time fighting each other than tracking that Turian. Which one of you made it first? It was a tie. I brought back his head. She got the rest of it. As far as I know, we both got paid. <laughs> anyway, when I told Alina about the diplomat's contract, she and I had a good laugh about it. So what'd you do? Well, I was going to lose the contract, but I respected Alina. In the end, I let her pick the location where we'd fight. She chose some old Solarian space station overrun with mercs <clears> and smugglers. <throat> that way we didn't have to worry about hurting any innocent bystanders. <laughs> she always was a bit of a softie. What happened on the station? What didn't happen? For two days I chased her through that station, used my entire store of ammunition, had to kill a bunch of mercs and use their crap weapons. By the third day, the station was barely holding together. The mercs were dead or gone, life support was failing, but I had her. She'd locked herself in the med labs. She was trying to patch herself up. Damn tough, that one. Then just when I thought I had her, the station's core went critical. Barely made it back to my ship in time. I assume the Asari Commando didn't make it. I watched the station from a distance. I never saw her leave. And when that place blew, there was nothing left larger than a Turian's right nut. So I headed back How to big is that exactly? the good news and collect my pay. But before I got halfway there, Alina sent me a message. Better luck next time. <laughs> Now, I'm not superstitious, but if someone can survive that, well, they deserve to live. At least, for a bit longer. But what about the diplomat? He wanted her dead. I told him the truth. <laughs> Alina was still alive and she was really pissed. I told him if he wanted to live, he'd need me around to protect him. You're smarter than you look, Rex. <laughs> he kept me on as his personal guard until he died. Natural causes. Easiest job I've ever had. A little boring, but credits are credits. So long, Rex. I thought I'd just check in. He wanted to talk war stories. Anybody else got war stories before you head to Ilos? Commander, I wanted to thank you. What for, Garrus? For everything. Taking me with you, letting me be part of your team. I've learned a lot. I'm, uh... Thanks, Commander. You're welcome, Garrus.
be tricky getting a bear to the stable wrecks. I've heard people mention that before, but since the bear bucks you off after a while, it must be tricky getting one. Hey, Shepard. Do you need something? Apparently not. I should go. See you later. I know you can retame the bear, but that would be kind of frustrating. Tame a bear, ride it a ways, get knocked off, tame it again, ride it a ways, get knocked off, rinse and repeat till you get it back to the stable. Uh, should we check in one last check with Liara? We're gonna have an encounter with her shortly. I think we're all full on metagel, but I could also hit up um, station real quick. Check our locker. Check Dreg's locker one more time. Anything in the locker? Nothing. Hey Rex, don't get me wrong. I'm I'm happy to do essentially meaningless tasks in games, like in Mass Effect 3. I'll do all the push-ups, uh, pull-ups at the party. All the pull-ups at the party, and that takes like 15 minutes. Worth it! I get the feeling you want to ask me something, Commander. I just wanted to talk. Of course, Shepard. What did you want to talk about? I should go. Goodbye, Shepard. against time. Sovereign, you've discovered that the real enemy is not Saren, but a reaper called Sovereign, a sapient warship of tremendous power. Sovereign is using Saren as a tool to find the conduit, the key to unleashing a new reaper invasion on the galaxy. Use the Mew Relay to go to Ilos and stop Saren before he uses the conduit to unleash a reaper invasion on the galaxy. that would be Liara. So this playthrough for, we've had different playthroughs here, but this one is, is kind of like my baseline. This, this is my roots here. I like Adept and Sentinel, Jennifer Hale, Femshep playthroughs, Paragon, Goody Two Shoes, and Liara, although it's really just my opinion, seems to me kind of like the canon love interest. Um, that's not really true. There's so many ways you could look at that. But uh, the way things play out with Shadow Broker, the way she leaves and comes back. She really grew on me. My first playthrough of the series, I romanced no one till the third game when I think I romanced Trainer. But uh, the Asari as a race and Liara in particular grew on me so much during that playthrough that subsequently she's my Goyle. What are you, what are you gonna do? Although I did at one point um, try a Thane romance. That was fantastic. Got a lot of good stuff. Shall we? Have fun storming Ilos. All right, Green Leader, you gotta go to class. Don't work too hard. We'll see you in a little bit. Uh, I guess we probably won't see you again tonight. See you Thursday. We're gonna be playing Abzu on Thursday and starting near Automata on Friday then coming back to Mass Effect after that. Green Leader, have a good rest of your day. Didn't you date Tali last time? That's right, we did, and I screwed it up too. We never even got the emergency induction port sequence. I uh, neglected 
way too many conversations with crewmates. But you're right. We did finally have a uh, Tali romance, which I'd never gotten to see before, except in other people's playthroughs. In the golden age of the Protheans, Ilos was a verdant world dotted with the spires and arches of magnificent cities. Even casual observation shows this is no longer the case. Ilos has been devastated by means unknown, its entire surface changed to the color of rust. The atmosphere shows heightened levels of oxygen. Wildfires presumably ignited by lightning strikes can be seen burning on the dark side. This indicates that most, if not all, respirating animal life forms have died off. Surface gravity is a comfortable 1.17 standard G's. 38 Celsius surface temp. Shepard, may I speak with you? I was just thinking about you. I have been thinking about you too, and what we are about to face. I do not know what is going to happen on Ilos. I hope we will stop Saren, of course, but part of me fears we are already too late. There is something I must tell you, in case we fail. Go ahead. I'm listening. These could be our last moments together. Our last chance to show each other how we feel. I want this to be special. I want this, Liara. I do. But are you sure you're ready? I have never been more sure of anything in my life. Will you join with me, Shepard? Let our bodies and minds unite. Hey, Shep, don't get too excited now. Just tell me what to do. I like this better than embracing eternity. was incredible, Shepard. You were incredible. Five minutes ETA to the Mew Relay. Joker! I had better go. Duty calls. You would not want to keep Joker waiting. Shepard, whatever happens on Ilos, I just wanted to say... Thank you. For everything. Commander, we've got company. Have their sensors picked us up yet? Well, stealth systems are engaged. Unless we get close enough for a visual, they won't have any idea we're here. Picking up some strange readings from the planet's surface. Take us down, Joker. Lock in on the coordinates. Negative on that, Commander. The nearest landing zone's two clicks away. We'll never make it in time on foot. Get us something closer. There is nowhere closer. I've looked. Drop us in the Mako. You need at least a hundred meters of open terrain to pull off a drop like that. Joker, the most don't. I can find near Saren is twenty. Twenty meters? No way we can make a drop in there. We have to try. Find another landing zone. There is no other landing zone. The descent angle's too steep. It's our only option. It's not an option. It's a suicide run. We don't. I can do it. Joker. I can do it. Gear up and head down to the Mako. Joker. Drop us right on top of that bastard. Hey, poor Ash is still level one. 
probably. Ah. Uh, extra dialogue on Ilos, right? Not so sure about Garrus. I gotta we say. have to get inside this bunker before Saren finds the conduit. There is no way we're getting past that door with brute force. Saren found a way to open. A minute. There must be some kind of security override somewhere in this complex. We will have to find some way to get it up and running again. Joker's greatest moment has yet to come. I mean, maybe in this game, but Joker's greatest moment. Uh, you're just playing two, right? For the first time. Well, he's got some really special stuff that comes much later. I don't want to spoil it. here. Pissed off the armature now. get to Mass Effect 3. I don't know what your stance on DLC is if you're playing the DLC for 2, 3 when you get there, but it is part of the DLC. His finest moment is part of the Citadel DLC. You don't want to miss it. Colossus 8, after getting one from that uh, quest. It's Turian. I bet that's better than what Garrus is wearing. Much better. Look at the boost Garrus is getting. He needs it, too. Fragile little guy that he is.
So I think this brings us up on the far side of the courtyard where those armatures were. Team, stop fighting armatures. Ow. standing right in front of me saved on the way up the stairs um okay not quite there we go armature control it was around here somewhere hard decryption okay armatures down that's gonna help <clears throat> Much better. Still no save. No savey savey. No save. This is where we need to go. Raptor, Tsunami, Predator. Secrets here that were meant to be forgot. Naginata Thermal Armor. Like I know that one. Thermal Armor 8. Let's take a look. Doesn't even sound familiar. I want to see what it looks like. It's worse armor, but. Uh, orange and black. Pretty good looking. go to this elevator instinctively but all it does is take us up here right and we don't progress from up there we progress down here so i think for the first time in my mass effect life i'm going to not take that trolley elevator to nowhere
Perimeter secure. There's one container up there, yeah, but that's it. Couldn't remember if there was even a container up there, but... Control the elevator to a box! Ah, if we had Tali and I thought she was gonna bounce, I'd do it. Colossus. I haven't seen this armor in a while. This must be the command center for the entire complex. Saren's troops must have sealed the doors from here after you went inside. We will have to figure out how to disengage the security lockdown if we ever want to get inside that bunker. Almost recharged. Darius, get your shields up. Good, good. Smoke the prime. That'll help. Another prime. We had a destroyer. damage. <laughs> Jack always says the best things. Armature repair station. Yeah, you can repair these armatures and, uh, and use them here. Or just fight. series of hard decryptions. Get some armatures on your side for a change. Come, Saren already has a head start. We have to go find him before he reaches the conduit. Unless he's already found it, then we're just walking into a trap. That is a chance we will have to take. Hold on. Something's happening. Truly. Unable to... Invading fleets. No escape. Sounds like some kind of message, but I don't recognize the language. It is probably in Prothean. This recording must be 50,000 years old. No wonder we cannot understand it. Occurred to me a moment ago that um, there it actually won't be a stream tomorrow, Lance. But it just occurred to me because uh, I had it all down. I have it in like three places where these things are, but my ducks weren't in a row. Beady Gray dropped in earlier, and it's his birthday today. 
I asked him if he was going to stop by on his birthday, and he said he would try to, and he did, and he did. So if you're still out there, BD Gray, happy birthday to you, and big happy birthday to you. I know you were going to hang out with family, get some food, and uh, hopefully have a good time there. I missed my opportunity, I fear, to wish you a happy birthday when you popped in before. Pieces didn't uh, fall into place in my head in time. Liara's a resident Prothean expert, so-called. <clears throat> She's got a lot to learn. It's probably in Prothean. Recording must be 50,000 years old. No wonder we can't understand it. You can't understand it, Liara? It's perfect sense to me. The message is all broken up, but I recognize some of the words. It's a warning against the Reaper invasion. Of course. Between the beacons and the cipher, an understanding of the Prothean language would have been transferred into your mind. <laughs> Not safe. Seek refuge inside the archives. What's it say? Can you make out anything useful? Fought Reapers. The Citadel. Overwhelmed. Only hope. Act of desperation. The conduit. All is lost. It said something about the conduit, but it's too degraded to help. We should go. Cannot be stopped. Cannot be stopped. Cannot. Cannot be stopped. This place feels wrong to me. Not just because of the gift. She didn't get her clothing allowance this week. Nope. <laughs> oh, didn't think I was going to make that one after screwing it up that badly. Titan Hammer Karpov. She knows the blue and red don't go together. I think you got a good reason right there. Ori, I'm, I'll, I'll buy that for a dollar. But Liara would be blue, and then she'd have the red halo around her and all that. Her blue face would be swathed in red. Scimitar and a Banshee, rank 9. Seventy one is our pre ILO save, so we gotta save keep that one. We don't wanna overwrite one seventy one. Who votes we take the Mako into the creepy underground tunnel? I have spent my life studying the Prothians, but I never dreamed I would discover anything like this. 
This bunker might have been the last refuge of their entire species. Just imagine what mysteries it might hold. Imagine what secrets it might reveal. Hey, try to remember my one. Zaren, found a way to fade the entire night. Virgil! <laughs> I am sorry. I was swept up in the moment. I just hope we have the opportunity to study. What are all those things on the wall? Some kind of containers? They look like stasis pods. The Protheans probably tried to keep themselves alive through cryogenic freezing. Something must have gone wrong. This bunker became their tomb. The pods are dead. Thanks, Liara, but I knew the perimeter was secure when I cleared it with my big freaking cannon. Just had a feeling. Oof. Visual the backstory database. What is happening? It's a trap. Saren must have set an ambush. I do not think Saren is behind this. Vigil. You are not Prothean, but you are not machine either. This eventuality was one of many that was anticipated. This is why we sent our warning through the beacons. Looks like some kind of VI program. Pretty badly damaged. I do not sense the taint of indoctrination upon any of you. Unlike the other that passed recently, perhaps there is still hope. This is incredible. An actual Prothean VI, and I can understand it. I have been monitoring your communications since you arrived at this facility. I have translated my output into a format you will comprehend. My name is Vigil. You are safe here for the moment, but that is likely to change. Soon, nowhere will be safe. What are you? Are you some kind of artificial intelligence program? I am an advanced non-organic analysis system, with personality imprints from Kesad Aishan, Chief Overseer of the Ilos Research Facility. Why did you bring me here? You must break a cycle that has continued for millions of years. But to stop it, you must understand, or you will make the same mistakes we did. The Citadel is the heart of your civilization, and the seat of government as it was with us, and as it has been with every civilization that came before us. But the Citadel is a trap. The station is actually an enormous mass relay, one that links to dark space, the empty void beyond the galaxy's horizon. When the Citadel relay is activated, the Reapers will pour through, and all you know will be destroyed. Won't stand a chance. Nobody ever noticed the Citadel was an inactive mass relay. <clears throat> the Reapers are careful to keep the greatest secrets of the Citadel hidden. That is why they created a species of seemingly benign organic caretakers. The Keepers maintain the station's most basic functions. They enable any species that discovers the Citadel to use it without fully understanding the technology. Reliance on the Keepers ensures no other species will ever discover the Citadel's true nature. Not until the Relay is activated, and the Reapers invade. How do the Reapers survive out in dark space? We have only theories. 
The researchers here came to believe the Reapers enter prolonged states of inactivity to conserve energy. This allows them to survive the thousands and thousands of years it takes for organic civilization to rebuild itself. But in this state, they are vulnerable. By retreating beyond the edges of the galaxy, they ensure no one will accidentally discover them. They keep their existence hidden until the Citadel Relay is activated. he turns on the relay, the Reapers can wipe out the Council and the Citadel fleet in one fell swoop. That was our fate. Our leaders were dead before we even realized we were under attack. The Reapers seized control of the Citadel and through it the mass relays. Communication and transportation across our empire were crippled. Each star system was isolated, cut off from the others. Easy prey for the Reaper fleets. Over the next decades, the Reapers systematically obliterated our people. World by world, system by system, they methodically wiped us out. The war was lost. If you'd surrendered, they might have let you live. Uh -uh. No offer of surrender was ever given. Our enemy had a single goal. The extinction of all advanced organic life. Through the Citadel, the Reapers had access to all our records, maps, census data. Information is power, and they knew everything about us. Their fleets advanced across every settled region of the galaxy. Some worlds were utterly destroyed. Others were conquered, their populations enslaved. These indoctrinated servants became sleeper agents under Reaper control, taken in as refugees by other Protheans. They betrayed them to the machines. Within a few centuries, the Reapers had killed or enslaved every Prothean in the galaxy. They were relentless, brutal, and absolutely thorough. I don't understand. Where did the Reapers go after they conquered your people? Our worlds were stripped bare, harvested by the indoctrinated slaves. Everything of value, all resources, all technology was taken. Certain that all advanced organic life had been extinguished, the Reapers retreated back through the Citadel Relay into dark space, sealing it behind them. All evidence of the Reaper invasion had been wiped away. Only their indoctrinated slaves were left behind, abandoned. Mindless husks, no longer capable of independent thought, the indoctrinated soon starved or died of exposure. The genocide of the Protheans was complete. Kept you waiting, huh? What do the Reapers get out of this? Why do they keep repeating this pattern of genocide over and over? The Reapers are alien, unknowable. Perhaps they need slaves or resources. More likely they are driven by motives and goals organic beings cannot hope to comprehend. In the end, what does it matter? Your survival depends on stopping them, not in understanding them. You said you brought me here for a reason. Tell me what I need to do. The conduit is the key. Before the Reapers attacked, we Protheans were on the cusp of unlocking the mysteries behind mass relay technology. Ilos was a top secret facility. Here, researchers worked to create a small scale version of a mass relay. One that linked directly to the Citadel, the hub of the relay network. The conduit is not a weapon. It is a backdoor onto the Citadel. What happened next? We severed all communication with the outside, and our facility went dark. The personnel retreated underground into these archives. To conserve resources, everyone was put into cryogenic stasis, I was programmed to monitor the facility and wake the staff when the danger had passed. But the genocide of an entire species is a long, slow process. Years passed, decades, centuries. The Reapers persisted, and my energy reserves were dwindling. How did you survive? I began to disable the life support of non-essential personnel. First support staff, then security. One by one, their pods were shut down to conserve energy. 
Eventually, only the stasis pods of the top scientists remained active. Even these were in danger of failing when the Reapers finally retreated back through the Citadel relay. There were hundreds of stasis pods out there. You just shut them down? You killed them? You were programmed to protect them, not kill them. This outcome was not completely unforeseen. My actions were a result of contingency programming entered on my creation. But they didn't tell the non-essential staff about this contingency. I saved key personnel. When the Reapers retreated, the top researchers were still alive. My actions are the only reason any hope remains. When the researchers woke, they realized the Prothean species was doomed. There were only a dozen individuals left, far too few to sustain a viable population. Yet they vowed to find some way to stop the Reapers from returning. A way to break the cycle forever. And they knew the Keepers were the key. Aren't they under the influence of the Reapers? The Keepers are controlled by the Citadel. Before each invasion, a signal is sent through the station compelling the Keepers to activate the Citadel relay. After decades of feverish study, the scientists discovered a way to alter this signal. Using the conduit, they gained access to the Citadel and made the modifications. This time, when Sovereign sent the signal to the Citadel, the Keepers ignored it. The Reapers are trapped in dark space. Are you following along so far? The mysterious Keepers work for the Citadel, part of the Citadel. They maintain it, but they also activate it. Activate it as a mass relay. It's part of the cycle where the Reapers come back from dark space to annihilate the sentient life that has progressed too far. I'm getting ahead of things, but the scientists that were wake, uh, that were awoken at this facility, the few that remained, the last of them, used the relay to access the Citadel. What do you think they found there? They were able to stop Saren's signal, or the Reaper's signal, I'm sorry, from activating the relay this time. What do you think happened to them? Saren must have some plan to undo everything you did. The one you call Saren will use the conduit to bypass the Citadel's defenses. Once inside, he will transfer control of the station to Sovereign. Sovereign will override the Citadel systems and manually open the relay, and the cycle of extinction will begin again. Is there any way we can stop them? There's a data file in my console. Take a copy when you go. When you reach the Citadel's master control unit, upload it to the station. It will corrupt the Citadel's security protocols and give you temporary control of the station. It might give you a chance against Sovereign. Wait, where's the Citadel's master control unit? I've never heard of anything like that. Through the conduit, follow Saren. He will lead you to your destination. So... And before we pick his brain a little further, his database... Ford mentioned something I, I've often mentioned while we play Mass Effect. The dark energy stuff. A lot of the original plot directions were altered as the second and third games were made and the development team changed. And the dark energy stuff largely was retconned. Mentioned again, we'll see more of it, hear more of it in Mass Effect 2, but by the time we get to 3, it... Uh, is not what it once might have been. And a lot of that ties into the dark energy stuff. Ori, are you a fan of indoctrination theory? <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm not, but... So what happened to those scientists? When they left this facility and went to the Citadel, at that time occupied by no intelligent races, just keepers, what do you think happened? What happened to the survivors from the Conduit Project? They used the Conduit to gain access to the Citadel, but the Conduit is only a prototype. The portal only links in one direction, so they were trapped on the station. I do not know what became of them then. It is unlikely they found any food or water on the station. I fear they suffered a slow, grim death. 
I only know they succeeded in their mission to seal the relay. Your presence here proves their sacrifice was not in vain. See, at this time, and at any time, sentient races have gotten far enough to populate the Citadel and make it the center of their government. The Citadel becomes a hub. Obviously, food, water, transport, everything, resources. But not when the Prothean scientists went to alter the signal. Alter the equipment that would receive the signal. They found nothing. If the Reapers are trapped in dark space, how did Sovereign get here? It is logical to assume the Reapers would leave one of their own behind after each extinction. A sentinel to pave the way for their inevitable return. Like those in dark space, Sovereign probably spent most of the last 50,000 years in a state of hibernation. Periodically, it would wake to analyze the situation. Keeping its existence hidden, it would evaluate the state of galactic civilization. And when the time was right, it would signal the Citadel and usher in the next Reaper invasion. But this time the signal failed. The Keepers did not respond. Sovereign's allies were trapped in the void. Alone, it was forced to try and discover what had gone wrong. Sovereign's the largest ship in the galaxy. Why all this secret? Why not just attack the Citadel? Sovereign is not invincible. Revealing its true nature would have united the forces of every organic species against it. Even a Reaper couldn't survive such odds. But the Reapers are patient. They will not rush into the unknown. Sovereign could have been planning this for centuries, moving deliberately, gathering allies. Slowly, it has assembled the pieces of the puzzle, working through agents to keep itself hidden. Saren is the most visible pawn of the Reapers, but I doubt he was the first. Now Sovereign has grown bold. Whether from confidence or desperation, I cannot say. But it is determined to reopen the portal to Dark Space. What about the beacon on Eden Prime? And the one on Vermeer? What were they for? At our apex, the beacons spanned the breadth of our empire. We used them as a single galaxy-wide network to transmit data and communications rapidly from world to world. Virtually all the beacons were destroyed during the invasion, but once the Reapers were gone, the survivors here on Ilos decided to risk sending out a message. We knew it was unlikely there were other survivors, but if there were, we wanted them to know about Ilos. We wanted to give them hope, so a message was sent across the network. You could have exposed yourself to the Reapers. In truth, we didn't expect any of the beacons would still function, but we had to try. If there were survivors, we had to reach them. The message was meant for our own people. It was coded so only organic beings could interpret it. We still didn't understand the power of Reaper indoctrination. We never realized it could lead an agent of the machines, like Saren, to this world. But it has also led you here. So perhaps we did not fail after all. So when the Reapers created the Citadel, they created the Keepers as well? A more likely scenario is that the Keepers were one of the early harvested civilizations. Perhaps the very first. Perhaps they responded well to indoctrination or the Reapers simply bred them to be obedient. In any case, they were left behind to operate and maintain the Citadel. But the Keepers are no longer directly controlled by Sovereign or its ilk. They evolved so that they only respond to the signals emitted by the Citadel itself. When the Protheans altered the Citadel signals, they broke Sovereign's hold over the Keepers. Now, they are completely harmless. Sovereign must have realized organic races were difficult to control. A likely hypothesis. The Keepers evolved in an unanticipated direction. Non-organic servants like the Geth would be more predictable. Saren's got enough of a head start. Grab that data file and let's go. Shepard, are you sure? Who knows how much longer Vigil will be here? Even now the projection is weak. 
This might be our only chance to speak with it, our only link to the knowledge of the Protheans. It is the opportunity of a lifetime. She does have a point. It might know something useful. I will provide whatever information I can. My data banks, however, are limited to information directly related to stopping the Reaper invasion. Ah, <sighs> but nothing. I thought there was more. I've got the file. Come on. The one you call Saren has not reached the conduit. Not yet. There is still hope if you hurry. Right. Bye, Vigil. Alright, save in here. First, or maybe the second. Thought that far, huh? Hmm. All their culture, all their advanced technology, and the Protheans were taken in by the Reapers just as we were. They failed. The Protheans did not fail. They gave us a chance. It falls to us to make the most of it. So I suggest we hurry. To, you'll have to give your own opinion when the time comes, Ori, but I will tell you that for me, Mass Effect 2, the entire end sequence is one of the greatest set pieces in all of gaming, in, in my gaming life. More than 30 years of gaming, that is one of the most stellar, intense, it's just mind-blowing sequences I've ever taken part of in a video game. And I hope you find it to be just as compelling. All right. Here's our trench run. Well, not quite. Sort of our trench run. Pre-trench run. The greatest set piece in all the world. It also, yeah, I also thought too had one of the best beginnings of any game I've played. Go, please. <laughs> Alright, we'll try to stop hyping it up for you. But it's really hard to overhype that one. It's the good news. Go. Try, I'm just trying to kite left to right. Just wanting to strafe, that's all. I'm gonna climb the walls.
<clears throat> I max out Nemesis, I get Lift Specialization, which adds a little bit. My Barrier, which I haven't been using. We haven't used Barrier once. You think we'll ever use it? Nara, one more point for you. You too, you can... You too can have a barrier you will never use. Got another level? Nice. They're just handing them out like candy. What is this barrier you speak of? I don't know, I forgot already. Trench run should be coming up shortly. There's our target. There, the conduit. It's incredible. We don't have time to admire the view. We have to get through that relay, and these Geth aren't going to make it easy on us. Yeah, 40 seconds. Quit bouncing, Mako. Taking heavy fire! Made it to the citadel and we're we're gonna take our last break right here seems like a good place for it right we go any further big stuff starts happening more big stuff starts happening 
it is time to take our last break of the night. And, uh, and then we're going to the end of the game. So, go stretch your legs, grab a drink, smoke them if you got them. I'm gonna go check on the dogs, and I will be back. And we will finish this. Got a couple songs, four, five, six, seven, about eight minutes. Eight minute break! I could never do a Wookiee to save my life. Okay, see ya soon. Yeah.